there is one more type of car that's promising for the future, which is hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. So in these cars, the fuel is not gasoline, it's not electricity from the grid, it is hydrogen. And so this is a reaction that is not a combustion reaction. So unlike the hydrocarbon combustion reactions, this is hydrogen fuel and it combines with oxygen atom and these oxygen, uh, these oxygen molecules come from the atmosphere just like oxygen comes from the atmosphere in a combustion engine. Uh, but the, the hydrogen and oxygen combine and form just one product which is water. So there's no carbon dioxide product, there's no air pollutants, and uh, there's a lot of energy produced, enough energy to power the car. So this is uh, chemical energy that produces electrical energy at, to power the car that then is mechanical energy when the car moves. So hydrogen is processed in a fuel cell. And the fuel cell is an electrochemical cell that produces electricity by converting the chemical energy uh, without burning. So it's not a hot reaction like combustion is. And um, this can produce a lot of energy enough for a car or other other um, possibilities are being discussed for fuel cells like small appliances in home. So here's a schematic of a fuel cell car. This is the Honda FCX. FC stands for fuel cell. And this has number one, a tank that is hydrogen. Now hydrogen is a problem. Storing hydrogen as a fuel instead of gasoline Hydrogen is very flammable and very explosive, even more so than gasoline. So there are uh, other ways around this that we'll get to, but first you need hydrogen. So this would be hydrogen H2, uh, ideally as a gas, but it doesn't have to be stored necessarily as a gas. It could be stored as a liquid or in another form. So these are, um, this provides the fuel for the fuel cells, and these fuel cells generate electricity to power the car. So this is uh, electricity that is then stored uh, as portable, portable in a battery. So this is a lithium ion battery. Remember, lithium ion is rechargeable. It can be used, use the, ener the chemical energy or then also replace the chemical energy. And that can come from this electricity generated from the battery. So instead of having to plug it in. Um, so this chemical energy becomes mechanical energy as this uh, is used to power the car. Uh, the electricity moves the car, moves the drivetrain, and that is movement, energy of motion, mechanical energy. A fuel cell is much like uh, the chemical batteries that we looked at earlier in this chapter. So a galvanic cell is electrochemistry. You have chemical energy being converted to electrical energy. And so this is a spontaneous reaction. It's a redox reaction that involves a transfer of electrons uh, because you have two different materials. And so what's different though is than a chemical battery, in a chemical battery you have those metals or those two materials or the two substances are in the battery already. Okay, And so this is a storage of chemicals and it's why uh, the primary batteries go dead. You use up the store of chemicals inside of the battery. Uh, this though, a fuel cell, is one in which you have the substances are constantly replaced. They're constantly supplied and the reaction is um, a continuous reaction. So it's not stored chemicals, they're re replaced. Just like a car, you can uh, have gasoline constantly added in. And so fuel cells, you have the fuel constantly added in. And that's the fuel, which is hydrogen. So it's a cross between a car with gasoline and a portable electronic um, type of battery. So this continually makes its own energy from the fuel cell, okay? And this is going to involve uh, two half reactions because it's redox. So there's an oxidation half reaction that is the hydrogen gas um, and hydrogen loses electrons and becomes hydrogen ions and electrons. There's a reduction half reaction in which oxygen gains electrons. And so oxygen uh, will gain electrons and form water as the only product. Comparing combustion engine cars versus hydrogen fuel cell is that you have different fuels for sure. 
So in a combustion engine, you have gasoline, which is a hydrocarbon. The hydrogen fuel cell, that's H2, H hydrogen gas is the fuel. But what's similar is they both use oxygen. This is O2 from, from the air. And uh, the products of combustion include the energy. Um, the carbon dioxide is the main product that we're concerned about. There's also some water. And uh, there's heat and heat. Uh, for the, fu the fuel cell, the hydrogen, there's water is the only product, as I mentioned earlier. And electricity. There's a tiny amount of heat, but it's really a pretty... Uh, relatively cold, colder, cooler reaction compared to the combustion engine. So uh, this is higher, more efficient because you don't lose as much energy as heat. And this is um, generating electricity that then continues on. It is promising as either a fuel cell in a car or even to generate electricity for a small, a small appliance in a home. And so a hydrogen economy, it has been proposed, is the idea of having hydrogen replacing fossil fuels, not just for cars, but for everything, for, for coal and methane, as well as petroleum. And so in just looking at the process of hydrogen gas, though, is the issue. So how do we get hydrogen? We can't pump it out of the ground currently. Methane, which is natural gas, is used to produce hydrogen gas, and this requires energy. And so uh, we don't have hydrogen gas present on Earth. Unlike um, oil and coal and methane, hydrogen gas has to be produced. Okay. So one way to produce it could be the electrolysis of water. This is basically just taking water and splitting it into hydrogen and oxygen. And uh, these this also requires energy, which is problematic because you can got to decide where the energy is going to come from. If you plug it in, it comes from electricity. And where does that electricity come from? But the good thing is, is there are alternative energies that can be used. Renewable energies can be used to create hydrogen gas. You just need some energy to split water. So using solar, using hydroelectric to create hydrogen gas, and then that hydrogen would be used as a fuel, replacing all the fossil fuels that we currently use. So it, ideally, this would all would be the fuel, would be starting with water and then splitting that water into the hydrogen gas that then a car uses. So because in theory, water can be used and then split into the hydrogen, this is, has been proposed uh, for, space, for space missions because it is somewhat portable. Or if you're getting to a site that has, say, solid ice that could be melted to water and then used for hydrogen and then set up a whole uh, fuel system. So splitting water, the hydrolysis of water into hydrogen fuel, is something you can actually do uh, with just a 9-volt battery. So a 9-volt battery in salt water, I'll show you this video has, you can see here, is the um, gas are those bubbles that are produced. And let me show you just a second. The gas are these bubbles that are produced. There's hydrogen, and this is produced at one electrode. There's oxygen produced at, at the other electrode. And this is something that is, it requires energy, but not a lot if you can use a 9-volt battery in the water. And so this is what's been proposed for cars, is to instead of having this volatile hydrogen gas stored in the tank to have water and then generate the hydrogen gas. And this uses a series of um, catalyst exchange membranes uh, to take water and split it using sunlight, using solar cells as the energy source, and then get that hydrogen, which would then continue on and be used in a car. So if you've seen a kit like this, this is a hydrogen fuel cell kit. This is one where there's a little solar panel here and there's water that is supplied as the fuel and that water is split into hydrogen, which then can power this small little car. There currently already are hydrogen fuel cell cars on the road, which means that hydrogen fuel is present at uh, fueling stations. And so the problem with hydrogen as a fuel in its natural state, it's a gas and it has to be uh, under high pressure. So this is a different kind of gas pump than you're used to. It's actually a pressurized system. And so there's safety issues with anything stored under pressure. Um, but this is promising for the future is the ability to store hydrogen gas 
not as that high hydrogen, but in a, a system that has these metal hydrides. And so this would be a lower pressure. And this is something that would allow for having hydrogen fuel in cars that is not necessarily going to be under pressure, a gas under pressure in the car.